Just like last time, Buster the conductor will have to face the music. He'll be propped up on a simple metal frame. Should he be buffeted by flying brass, he'll topple backwards. Now he just has to dress for the occasion. Hey, Buster, that suit's a nice uh, cut. Butt's too big. Last time they tried this, the trombone was on its own. This time, crucially, they've got a bust of Grant puckering up behind the mouthpiece. This is ballistics material. It's got the same consistency as human flesh, human muscle tissue. And that's behind this mouthpiece. He is snug there. That is a committed trombonist behind this mouthpiece. To make sure that the slide can launch smoothly, Jamie takes out his handy tube of lube and goes to work. <laughs> and we suddenly find out yet another startling fact about his past. The only time I had any kind of band instrument experience was I got a hold of an old tuba, so I mounted it in the bathroom when I was a teenager, and you could sit on the toilet, and everybody in the house knew what was going on. <laughs> uh, that's unique. <laughs> hold it, hold it, hold it. At this point, there are so many one-liners, my brain's about to explode. Stuff about movements, bum notes, crotchets, and wind. Oh, no! <laughs> Okay, better now. While we try to wipe from our minds the image of the Heinemann Cistern Symphony, let's take stock. Here is a disgruntled or very ambitious trombone player. He's decided during the 1812 overture to fill his mute with explosives for the finale. He fills them with explosives, they blow up, they send his slide shooting all the way towards the conductor, boom, who falls backwards and into the audience. That's the myth. With the bomb squad supervising, the mute is packed with black powder and loaded into the trombone bell. Places, please, everybody. We're ready to strike up the band. It's good to go. This is Mad Trombonist. Lips behind the mouthpiece revisit in five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> I can see the slide moved a little bit. <laughs> Just a little. I'm having the most shocking sense of deja vu. The high speed shows the mute flying from the trombone like shiny shrapnel and bouncing off Buster's cranium. But he remains unmoved. And as for the trombone slide, well, it's still firmly attached to the instrument. The trombonist's lips don't seem worse for wear, but I don't think they made much of a difference. In the name of due diligence, and because they love blowing stuff up, the guys reset for a reprise. This time, Jamie doubles the amount of black powder. That's perfect. This mute is going to be anything but. In five, four, three, two, one. Oh! <laughs> The music's on fire. Now that's a finale. In the aftermath of the second bomb trombone, it seems the Mythbusters might have settled an old score with the fans. <laughs> Again, just like the last one, we can see the shock wave in the bell, and the slide didn't come off. That's about the only thing that didn't suffer with this one, <laughs> is the slide. It didn't even knock the baton from his hand. Which is barely hanging there. This musical myth is looking more busted than Pete Townsend's guitar. Or is it? I think there's one last thing we could do to put this to bed once and for all, and that would be to take our second backup trombone and solder or weld the mouthpiece so that no air can escape from it. OK. Not just count on the lips, but make a complete blockage there and see if that works. If you say so. <laughs> Try and have some enthusiasm, Jamie.